The king. My brother just tell me that there was these hanks just as far someone that's dying with cancer. So we'll be praying for them just in a little bit. There's two requests right on the other side. Two requests, all right. One, the one is a request. All right, sir. And I'll lay them here to pray over them also. And then someone just passed a note, come around and passed a note over that about services for tomorrow. Uh, you who are here visiting us, we sure will be glad to have you come down. In the afternoon at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, they're going to have taped services. If you're not doing anything, there'll be one of the messages that, that you've never heard will be played and have prayer meeting. And, and we'll just expect a good time tomorrow afternoon at uh, 2 o'clock. <clears throat> it's going to be a pretty busy time for me because tomorrow, I see, I have to pick up Sunday morning and also Sunday nights and tomorrow nights too. And all of the history on those churches. And now, <clears throat> Sunday morning, the Lord willing, we're expecting a great time. Because Sunday morning, being our off, kind of an off from Saturday night, is the Lady of Sin Church Age. But Sunday morning, I want to pick up the Sleeping Virgin and the Resurrection, the 444,000, and all those little loose ends that ties the message together for Sunday morning. <laughs> Services will begin at 9 o'clock. Is that right, Pastor? Right, yes. At 9 o'clock Sunday morning. <laughs> that we want to pick up all those things like... What becomes of the sleeping virgin? And uh, what becomes of the wise virgin? When do they return back? Uh, where will the 144,000 appear? And many uh, things like that for Sunday morning to try to tie that together, which that goes right in with this message. And then Sunday night, we'll take up the last great angel and the message to the Lady of Sin. Sunday night, the Lord willing. And now, then tomorrow afternoon is the service here, a tape service. Brother... Uh, Gene just told me that we begin at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon and you people that like to come hear the messages have prayer around the altar you that's seeking the Holy Spirit or something wonderful time church is nice and warm open ready for anybody at any time that wants to come in and pray and seek the Lord the church is open and waiting and we're we'll be expecting him uh, put it like that be expecting it tomorrow afternoon or at any time that you want to come into the church to pray why, it's always ready. If they happen to be at the doors is locked or something, just across the street there, my brother, who's the caretaker here, I think it's 411, I believe that, or 811. Is it? 811. Just about this cat a corner from the church here, 811. Uh, he, the, his wife would have the key if they pull the door together and it locks, but they leave it open maybe in the morning, open it after the service is closed at night to keep children from running through it, you know, and breaking out the windows and so forth. You know how kitties are especially in this day. So we uh, close it on that account. We hate to have to even close the door anytime on the church. Maybe when the other one's fixed, we'll get it so it'll be different then. And we, somebody can be there all the time so that people can come in and pray and seek healing, seek the Holy Spirit. You who does not have the Holy Spirit in your life, come down. Stay here. Just stay all night if you want to. <laughs> Just stay till you do receive it. Who was that out here a while ago singing God all over me and God everywhere? I, I thought the rapture would come. I was looking around there and see if everybody was around. It was really wonderful. I appreciate that. We can stand a little of that most any time. Yes, sir. That, Amen. I just got in time to get to hear that. Now, I've missed all the good singing in these meetings because I thought maybe that, oh, I'm just so busy. You know how it is. People... People come in by plane, by train, by... You, you never know it, you see, because it just comes in the phone. You have to go to them, meet them, and pray for them, and everywhere. It's just constantly going and then trying to study, too. It makes it quite a problem. <clears throat> but we're always happy to meet the people and do yeah, what we can for them because it's the, that's our, we are a public servant for the Lord Jesus Christ to His people in this day. We like to do more than we... Do do, but we can't. Uh, minister rushed in this morning, nervous breakdown, just going to pieces. Fine fella, and because it, he was, he just overworked. Got started to get up. His little girl was standing in the room. She just started whirling. She had little red pajamas on. So the last thing he remembers was a little red dot going around, 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 around like that. Went out, see, and uh, so they rushed him right up. So it's um, it's just too much work. You see, you, you remember you're physical and. We, we, want, we think the whole burden's laid on us, but, you know, God's got servants everywhere to take care of some of that. So we just do the best we can, but a gracious minister trying to do all he can in this last days for his Lord. I sure 
And the Lord delivered him. Right there, there. Amen. Brought him right back around normally. All right. Went on his road rejoicing. Oh, a great thing happened today. I just don't want to get started on those things. But You know, I told my wife, I said, now there'll be somebody coming up there and he'll be a man short, heavy set, dark hair and dark eyes. He'll read that sign and start what you call him, see. I said, because the Lord's got a message for him. I raised up the Bible and I said, I'm going to lay these things in here. So you see, that's exactly what the Lord wants him to do. Eight years ago, a Polish man from Poland, raised in Poland, at a meeting, he come to the platform and they said, uh, the Holy Spirit looked at him told him, said, you're just confused. That's what he thought I said it was the Holy Spirit said. It stayed right with him all along and finally drug him from Kansas City to the building last night. And then he really got confused when he heard about that water baptism. He went to his hotel. The Holy Spirit said, rise now and go on up there. Somebody wanted to come along with him, but he refused it. Because in the vision, he come by himself. And so, and the gentleman liked to read the sign, started turning back away. And the wife called him. And I went to the door. I said, that's, that's him. Let him come on. He said, what must I do? After he's seen, he said, ah, I see it. I said, I want to show you just so he'll know now. See? I said, the Lord told me he was coming. He asked him. I said, I hear the scripture. Here, I hear where you want. <laughs> well, he's sure to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, he may be sitting present now for all I know. Are you here, brother? A brother, a Polish brother. Huh? Here he is, right? Yeah, back over in the corner here. Yes. That, raise your hand up so he can see that. <laughs> all right. To see the Holy Spirit, that just happens all the time. Many people think the visions just come on the platform. Oh, that don't start it. What about it, Brother Leo? <laughs> just everywhere. See, well, this is the minor place of it here. This is where a little bit happens. Out there where it's going all day and night. <laughs> see, that's my wife. and she, them, uh, My neighbor back there, Brother Woods, and all those who's around. Oh, my. These are the little, little things here. It's the big things that happen there. Amen. Now... And the half has never yet been told. Oh. Amen. I'm so happy for it, knowing that our Lord is soon coming and we're going to be with Him forever then. Not forever, but for eternity. Amen. For eternity. Yes. Now, the Lord willing, I believe it's the 18th Sunday a week. Yes. Sunday a week, the 18th. I had an awful battle. Satan's tried to give me this flu that they've got going around here. I just keep handing it back to him, and he hands it to me, and I hand it back to him. So, and so I had quite a little battle, so we'll probably battle it out next week. <laughs> and then, the Lord willing, by the next Sunday, the 18th, and uh, we are going to try to bring some uh, uh, service to pray for the sick people, because the things are backing up and backing up, and the real extreme emergencies we're trying to take care of as quick as we can in hours of, all hours of night and everything that come and go so the 18th we're going to have a regular healing service and if you got some of your loved ones that wants to be prayed for well, you bring them up or uh, bring them in at that time now there's uh, many of the folks at Jeffersonville was telling me said they come up the time they get here about 5 o'clock so they didn't have even room for their cars or six. so they I said, well, you, this is our visiting brethren from everywhere, people, many ministers. I said, they're, they're laying on to the teaching of this. And we're just trying to hit the highlights. And then uh, a little later, why, we'll have it in book form so you can read it. And, and it'll be a little, little more added to it because at night, you notice last couple nights, they're trying to save the voice, you see, because that big climax, that's what I want to see there. Amen. Where the revelation of Christ be made in this age. Thing, oh, what it is. And now, before we start reading the scriptures, and I know tomorrow's the big commercial day when we all have to go get our Saturday night's groceries in, and we have to get them on Saturday afternoon or Saturday morning one so we can have Saturday night free to come to church. So we'll try to let out early tonight so you won't be too tired tomorrow to get it, and then get back to the afternoon service with the brothers here with the tapes and, and also for tomorrow night. Now, can we just stand a moment for prayer, if you will? I wonder before we pray, if there's anyone here who has special requests for prayer, if you just let it be known by an uplifted hand, God sees. Now you see whether we're in a needy world or not, brethren. I guess 95 or 98 percent of the audience lifted their hands in. For I remember, you can't even move without God knowing it. See? He knows your intentions. He knows what you was asking for. Let us bow our heads. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are approaching thy 
holiness tonight, thy throne, through thy promise that you said that you would hear. And if we would believe, you would give us what we ask for. And we are confessing all of our wrongs. We realize, Lord, that we're not, we're not worthy of any of your blessings. We are, we are unworthy. We are altogether unworthy. And we do not come as if we were, we were worthy and, and we've done something great. Oh, Father, when we look at Calvary, that takes all the greatness away from us. We, we know nothing else than but Christ and Him crucified. Then when we see that He raised up on the third day according to the Scriptures for our justification, returned back 40 days later in the form of the Holy Spirit to abide with us until His visible appearing in the skies at the end time. And we see that end time approaching real swiftly now. And we're the most happy people, Lord, because of, that you have given us this great uh, uh, privilege. I'm so thankful, Father, that this listening audience sets with bowed hearts and listening quiet. And then, Lord, I pray that you'll sanctify my lips tonight and every night and every time that I shall come to thy pulpit to speak to thy people because, Lord, never let me speak anything wrong. You still have power to close mouths like you did in the lion's den with Daniel. Oh, and if I should ever say anything that wasn't according to your will, close up my mouth, Lord, that I speak it not. Bypass my thoughts. Put me on the right track, Lord, where I'll speak nothing but the truth. For I realize that in that great day, these people will be waiting out or up on the... Uh, waiting according to the ministry that I have preached to them. If you come to... To take in your stars and your angels, your ministers, your servants, they'll have to be thrashed out first according to these messages that we've been preaching here. You'll hold them responsible to your service. Now, Father, I pray that you'll let the Holy Spirit speak and not man. Circumcise our hearts that we can hear Him. I'll be listening, Father. Pray that you'll heal the sick and the afflicted, oh, all that the people are in need everywhere. Let thy grace and mercy be with them. Grant every request that was made known tonight by the uplifted hand. Out across the country, while many others are suffering, even those who these handkerchiefs represent in these requests laying under my hand here. Let the Holy Spirit answer, Father, and heal the sick. Speak to us now through thy written word, and by the Holy Spirit, we ask in Jesus' name, Amen. Be seated. <coughs> now, tonight it's a little warm in the church. The great Lady Ocean Church Age coming up. And tonight we're approaching that other great church age, which will be the, the fifth church age. We've taken the first church age, which is Ephesus. I might... Read these over again at the beginning. They were all written out. And so I would like to read them over for you that would like to check up on your papers. The first church age was the Ephesian church age from eighty fifty five to 170. Paul being the star and is the first church age. Works without love was God's complaint. Reward was tree of life. Second church age was 170 to 312. Irenaeus being the messenger of the day. And the complaint was, a it was tribulations and a persecuted church, reward, crown of life. The third church age was Pergamos, St. Martin being the messenger to that church. The church age was from 312 to 606. The complaint was false doctrine, Satan's lying the foundation of the papal rule. The marriage is church and state together. The reward was hidden manna and a white stone. And the fourth church age was Thyatira, Columbia being the angel of that church age, the messenger, 606 to 1520. And the church age was papal uh, seducing, the dark ages, last night, you know, the dark ages. And uh, the reward was power to rule over the nations and the morning star to the angel. Now tonight we're beginning on the fifth church age, which is the church age of Sardis, S-A-R-D-I-S, Sardis, and the messenger to this church age was Martin Luther, becomes more familiar to the Bible scholar, or this teacher, or the laity rather today, and that church age began in 1520 
and ended in 17 and 50. 1520 to 1750. And the uh, age of what we call Reformation age. And the complaint was using their own name. And the reward for the little remnant that was left was to walk before him in white raiment and their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. May the Lord bless us as we undertake now. Now we begin on the first verse of the third chapter of this uh, church age. The message to Sardis. The period of the Reformation, a small believing remnant left, just almost out. Now, to some of the newcomers, you might say on this year that so that you won't be behind in it. It's rather crude. And sometime we're going to come where we can place our messages out on the draw it up, come in the afternoon, fix it up. May do it Sunday. Now, these each represent the, uh, the church age. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This beginning with Philadelphia. And this up here represents the, the Pentecostal power or a church that was on Pentecost. It was quite a large church at the beginning, but they started a, a, a denominational spirit coming among them trying to denominate the church, which was called the Deeds of the Nicolaitans. Can you hear me way back? Yeah, all right. Uh, the Deeds of the Nicolaitans. Now, it wasn't a doctrine yet. And then we took the word and broke it down. What was Deeds? What was Nicolaitan? That's a foreign name to us. Nicolaitan. So I took the Greek and broke it down. And Nicol means to conquer or to overcome or overthrow something. Nicolaitan. Latian is the church. Laity. Nicolaitan. A, a deed that was trying to overthrow the laity and put all... The blessing and the only one to read the Bible, the only one to give the interpretation would be the bishop or some great head person of the church. Then we find out in the second church, age it would begin to squeeze way out. This is still Pentecost. And um, this is denomination, D. Now, in the third church age, Pergamus, Pentecost was almost squeezed out. But... The doctrine of denomination, it would come from a deed here all the way to a doctrine here. Then there's really get married right here. They married the this group here that had overpowered the Pentecostal groups. Now the way I'm saying that, brethren, that is the honest fact. That's according to the sacred writings of the histories. The books of the Nicene Council, Fox Book of the Martyrs, and all the great ancient writings. I've got some of the oldest manuscripts there is. And every one I say this with not, not saying I'm Pentecost. That don't mean, when I say Pentecost, that doesn't mean this organization of the day we're living in. That's just as guilty as the rest of them. Amen. But I mean the real Pentecostal. Amen. The real Spirit of God with the original doctrine, Amen. with the original blessings. With the original names, with everything exactly the way it began at the beginning, Amen. like it went through the Bible. Yeah. Now, then when we come to this age, you see how far Pentecost comes up? Can you see it in the back, all right? Can you make it out way back there? All right. Now, here come last night, the great age that we're in here, Constantine. Constantine, C-O-N-S, I put it. He, being a pagan, was as these Christians here, the ones that had the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, if they would pray that he would win a certain battle, well, he would become a Christian. During that time when he was at battle, he dreamed a dream that he should, uh, by a white cross that was put before him, he said, by this you win. That's right. Yeah. Then he woke his army up and painted on their shields a white cross. And that was the birthplace or the beginning of the Catholic order today called the Knights of Columbus. Now, now Constantine, there's, you can't glean one thing from the histories. 
Amen. of him being converted. He was nothing but a crooked politician. Amen. He had in his mind the idea to, to unite his kingdom and make it strong. So he himself being a pagan, worshipped the idols. Then he seen that the doctrine of the Nicolaitans had almost squeezed out to a place. So he used the same strategy that we found out last night. And Jesus <coughs> predicted it 304 years before it come to pass. That he would teach the doctrine of Balaam. How that Balaam deceived the children of Israel, caused them to commit fornications and, and offer, take things offered to idols, eat things. Now, we know that eating these things offered to idols, what it really was, was worshiping. Going in, they were bowing down to idols. Putting idols back in the Christian church, just like Balaam did. Back there had Israel to commit fornications, to go to this big feast of the idol. Well, Constantine did the same thing with his strategy, and he made a church. He gave a lot at the Nicene Council, and then they, he made a, a lot of um, a great buildings that he had, and he converted these into churches. And then he made a big marble altar, decorated with gold and gems, up above there, he put like a throne. And he made one man, the head, like a, he was called then, a bishop. And they put him up on this throne. Uh, Boniface III uh, was a throne. Not only did he walk around with clothes on like the, the peasant did, but they made him um, a great uh, fine robes and dressed him up like a god and set him up there and called him the biker. Viker or the vic vicarious aphelia adelia means instead of the Son of God. Now, here's the image that has wisdom. Draw, write that out, vicarious aphelia adelia. And then when you draw a line over here and add the numbers and you got exactly what God said the mark of the beast was, 666. Amen. Amen. Vicarious aphelia. Now, I've been in Rome and been in the Vatican. And the triple crown, jurisdiction of hell, heaven, and purgatory. See? Seen the crown, seen the vest, seen a, right there. Actually, on a Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock, I was supposed to meet the last pope that was there. Baron von Bonberg had the, and he said, now when you go, Brother Branham, the first thing you have to do is bow down on your right knee and kiss that ring. I said, that's out. That's out. Just forget it. Amen. I said, I, give, I have nothing against a man. He, he, but, they say, but I said, there's one thing. I'll give a man his title if he's reverend. Uh, that's all right. Bishop, elder, doctor, whatever. I'll gladly suit a man, but do a worship to a man. I'll owe my homage to one man, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the only man I doubt. doubt for. I said, just forget it. Just cancel it out. I wouldn't take it. And so um, I, after coming home, I found out there was another great American did that too, Teddy Roosevelt. He refused to do it on account. Remember that in history? That he refused to see the Pope because he had to kiss his ring or they have it on a big toe also, you know. So, oh, no. No, that's not. So then, however, in, now as Balaam, then we find out last night over, now here first, before we leave here, they consolidated this church and married got some pagan ideas, pagan idols that was in the church, the God of Jupiter, the God of the Sun, the God of Mars, the God of Venus, and all those idols of gods, and he took all them out of the pagan churches and put up Paul, Peter, Virgin Mary, all those, and said, here is your biker, because Jesus told Peter, I gave you the keys, and he is an apostolic successor. That's still Catholic doctrine to this day. Amen. And they put up idols. And what did they do? Brought idol worship into Christianity. So-called Christianity. Yeah. Not real Christianity. Because the little Pentecostals, I remember, I, don't, I didn't say Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian. They're not all. But the real genuine article of God was Pentecost. Was, is, and will always be. Amen. That's where the church began, right here with Pentecostal power. Now, you say, is that right, Brother Bram? I'll ask you to take the histories and look down through the stream of time to hear and find out if every one of those 
real true children of God didn't hold on to that Pentecostal blessing. Amen. Spoken tongues, interpret tongues, had signs and wonders, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everything that the apostles did, they did too, right down through that. That's reason. In that reading of history, I took Paul and Irenaeus and, um, and, and, and down to St. Martin, Columbus. Every one of those men plumbed down into this age here had signs and wonders. All right. You said this. The mic was having a little... Uh, is that better? Yes. All right. No, it's shake their head. They can't hear it all now, Bill. All right. Can you... Is it... Oh, you hear me now. Now, how's that? Is that better? Is that, everybody says, all right, Paul. That's one mark against you. <laughs> all right. Okay. Now, in this age here then, why you made up this great big thing and put up this man here as a universal bishop over all the churches, give him plenty of money and so forth, and promised them and did unite the church and state together and let the church control the state. Made him a great man. So there is exactly what Constantine did is the very same thing that we found over in this other church. That what God said that um, in the days of Elijah that they suffered that woman Jezebel to subdue his children. That taking place in the dark age. Look at where Pentecost is now. By my. Just black it out. And for almost 1,000 years it, from about 500 to 1,500 right at 606 to 530 uh, 520 is the exact numbers. But right on 1,000 years, there were bloody persecutions. Read the history. Amen. Now, a Catholic will tell you that the Christian church, they was a Christian church. They are the denominational Christian church. But the true Pentecostals was pressed out, Amen. killed and murdered and put to death Amen. by the popes and bishops and so forth, bloody as it could be. Amen. Now, someday that's going to cost me my life, see, to say that. Well, that's one thing, sure. I know which way I'm headed. Amen. <laughs> this keeps dripping with blood. But it's getting an hour and hour. You see, according to what's going on in the nation, it isn't going to be long. Amen. Don't you never back up on that. Amen. That's Amen. the truth. Amen. Be right with it. Amen. Mingle your blood like them in that day. Yeah. Now, Amen. in here, you see what's taking place. Then in here, the Jezebel doctrine come in. Jezebel was a woman, a pagan. Who Ahab did the same thing that Constantine did, married this woman in order to strengthen his kingdom and brought idolatry into Israel just exactly like Constantine did back there. And the Pentecost was almost gone completely. Now, God raised up Martin Luther. I want you to notice how it goes out here and almost fades completely out, then barely starts here. It comes down to here. Now, I kind of marked across that because it's a it's a great lesson for Sunday night, the Lord willing. Now, now I believe we're kind of caught up now to where we're at. Now, right in here is the, the dark age, right here. 1500, um, uh, from 606 to 1520. Right here, I'll put this here so you, 606 to 1520. That's the dark age, this church right here. The dark age. Now, this church that we're coming out on now is the Lutheran church. Now, most everyone back there, those people died out in the, these men like Irenaeus and Martin and Columbo, and they faded out. And now, you take anybody that wants to, search back any history you wish to, if it's an authentic history, and when they tell you that St. Patrick was a Catholic, they don't know what they're talking about. St. Patrick protested the Catholic Church and never went to Rome and firmly refused their doctrine. Amen. Exactly right. You go to Northern England, Ireland today and you see the same thing. St. Patrick was a man of God. Hallelujah. But St. Patrick, when he said in there that he, he chased all the snakes out of Ireland, that was a legend. How many of you ever read and heard about William Tell shooting an apple off his boy's head? That's a Catholic legend. Never was a word of it so. That's right there where it's supposed to happen. It's wrote up there. A legend, not so. In Switzerland. Billy and I sitting right there by the side of Lake Luzon. 
where he done the, the thing, he shot a man that's shooting out an apple off his boy's head. That's just legends, superstitions and things. It never was so. They have no record of it there where it happened or anything that they ever did it. And it really spills her out there and tells what it was. Now, but in this, it is no actually history that says he does So now, in here, in the church age, that's where it almost faded out. Completely gone out of existence. Now, in this other age comes the age of Reformation. Now, these things here, after almost a thousand years of blackness and darkness and fading out and so forth like that, the church kind of lost the sight of Irenaeus. He was a great man, a godly man. So was many hundreds of those precious saints. They gave their life's blood just as freely stand that arena as they could, see. For the cause of Christ, for the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, for speaking in tongues, the resurrection of Jesus Christ living in the life and His divine presence there. While a people that call themselves Christians was persecuting them. Amen. Right? It's exactly. Oh, it's a, it's a demonized uh, uh, legion of hell-deserving, I don't know what, come up like that and form themselves and make themselves, calls herself a prophetess. A divine interpreter of the word. Nobody knows it but them. Calls herself, but she is a liar. But at the same time, God is angel there with the truth. The truth will always go back to this. Always go back to the original because God never changes from that. Now, and we found out also last night, before we leave this, so it'll be settled in your heart, not only did in the type Jezebel... She had a daughter. You remember that? Amen. And Revelation 13 said this prostate church, Rome, had daughters. She was a mother of harlots. Is that true? Amen. Jezebel had a daughter. And what did Jezebel do with her daughter? See all those things, types and shadows? Jezebel, seen that her daughter married Jerome, which was the son of Jehoshaphat in Judea. Israel was divided at the time like this. Here is Jerusalem. Here. And here is Judea, here. Well, Ahab was here, and Jerome was here. All right? Jezebel had this conquered. All Israel taken idols. Then, all but Elijah and that little faithful group. Amen. All right? Now, over on this side was Jerome, over Judah, and when she had the baby by Ahab, she'd taken this girl and married her to Jerome's son, yeah. uh, to Jehoshaphat's son, which was Jerome, and brought idolatry into Judah. Amen. Uh, and put pagan altars in uh, Jerusalem. Uh, that's exactly Amen. what the Catholic Amen. Church done. Amen. She stuck out her doctrine of denomination and so forth and cut the Holy Spirit out of the church down here Amen. with her daughter, Luther, Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, and so forth. Amen. Exactly Amen. what she done. The Bible said she's a mother of harlots. Amen. 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 Now, you just look through the Scriptures. You see, you see anything any otherwise different in Scripture and history hitting exactly on them same marks, you come to me as a gentleman. See? Uh, That's right. Uh, it's Lord. not there. These denominations are poisonous things we've ever had in Protestantism. Amen. 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 Trying to make man govern the church. Another uh, uh, image like the one that's set on that throne. Amen. Amen. The head bishop, right. the gentle overseers of Pentecost. Well, now, let me see. What's his doctrine? Oh, he baptized in Jesus' name? He can't come in us. No, sure, brother. You turn it down. And that's turned down, dude. I'll give you to understand. Don't any of you over that meeting over there. Thumbs down. No matter how sick you are, stay away. No matter what God's doing. If you ain't looking through our glasses, why? Well, you're not seeing it all. Well, our image unto the beast. And the image had life to speak. It's exactly right. If you don't think they speak, just cross them up a little bit. Amen. Amen. You sure get in trouble. Amen. I remember Tulsa, Oklahoma... I was, oh, I was getting an awful mess there. Them denomination getting swinging around there. And I was standing in the building one day and I seen a, a vision. I seen a, a little pretty little old kitten and he was laying on a silk pillar. And he was the cutest little fella. And I walked over there and I'm afraid of a cat. And I went over and I began to rake him and he's going, purr, purr. You know how they do that like, funny noise, you know? And I was raking him and I said, pretty little kitty. And he said, purr, this is fine, you know? And I... Uh, I looked over behind his pillar and said, Pentecostal kitten. Well, I thought, now, isn't that strange? Now, this has got to be a vision. And something said, as long as you rake his fur this way, all right. But now, if you want to see what he's made out of, rake his fur backwards. <laughs> and 
when I raked his fur back, them eyes stuck out green, and he was a monster standing there spitting at me as hard as he could. See? <laughs> Just rake his fur back a little bit. Tell him his baptism of Father, Son, Holy Ghost is of the devil, you know, the Catholic Church. Watch what happens to him. His fur is good I come down and said to Brother Gene and them down there, oh, Brother Leo and them, I said, I sure had a real vision of Pentecostal denomination. <laughs> now, the third chapter, let's, first, Sardis is a dead church. It's dead because it got killed during this time. Just a little stretch of life, we'll find out in a few minutes what it was, just a little bit. From 1520 to 1750 was this uh, Sardis age. And the star or the angel of the star that was in his hand, which was the angel or the messenger of that church. Is that clearly understood that the star was an angel and an angel is a messenger to that age? Amen. Amen. Right. Now we have finished with the Nicene Council. She died back in there and all come into power and glory, church and state united. And can anyone remember what the lesson said last night? What many of those people thought? The millennium was on. Yeah. And all the, bringing in the millennium without the coming of Christ. See? The coming of Christ issues in the millennium. Amen. Amen. First thing. And in those days they had, if you take the history, you find out they had false Jesus' rise up and everything else. See? Yeah. And uh, they even thought that the Pope was Jesus. Calling him a biker instead of the Son of God. Uh, yeah, yeah, big holy God like sitting there. Let me tell you something. The Bible says that when Jesus comes, before he comes, there would rise false prophets. Amen. And there would rise false Jesuses. Amen. That's right. Lord, here, but let me just drop this into your heart. There will never be a Jesus set a foot on this earth until the church done raptured and gone. Amen. I just bear that in mind. Because there will be false Christ rise up. But Jesus will not be here on earth because the trumpet sounds and He never comes. We meet Him in the air. Amen. The church is already gone. And then when Jesus appears, there will be the returning back. Amen. The Gentiles goes to meet Him in the air. Amen. Is that Scripture? Amen. You go to meet Him in the air and then we go up and Jesus has never puts His feet on the earth until the church has been raptured and tucked home and the wedding supper is over. Amen. Amen. Then He returns back at the Jewish remnant. So, now... It was finished in the Nicene Council. The church had been, uh, been under the papal reign for almost a thousand years. They had killed off all who disagreed with them. That's right. You either come under that or you was, you was, you was killed. Like Jezebel did uh, to Israel. The Holy Spirit had left all together but just a very few during this age. Like Elijah and the remnant of Israel, they had not bowed a knee to Balaam. If you'd like to read that, then that's First Kings, the 19th chapter and the 18th verse. When Elijah was standing back there in the cave and he said, Lord, they've killed all your prophets. They've done everything. And I, I'm alone. I'm the only one to escape. But God told him he had several hundred yet that hadn't bowed their knee to Balaam and the laity out there. And so uh, Sardis. Now we start out the very word Sardis, the first verse. The word Sardis in the English terms means, if you want to look it up, means the escaped one. The true Sardis was the escaped one. That's what Sardis means. All right. The escaped one. Now, see, and um, the escaped one. Now, we're going to start on the first. Very, we're going to call it the Age of Reformation, and it's a very fitting thing for this Reformation, if we should call it that, because it's the Reformation was the escaped ones that come away and escaped out of it. Now, let's take the first verse. Unto the angel of the church of Sardis write these saying, saith he that has seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy work that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Now the salute. Now the seven spirits are the seven spirits and the seven stars. The spirits was the angels that went to the stars which were messengers. Seven spirits, seven different times the Holy Spirit would anoint a messenger 
which was a star in his day, a, a spirit is eternal, and a star that was made for a purpose to reflect light. In the dark of these church ages where candles and stars are represented, the angel, the spirit, was the one that went to the star and reflected the light of the Holy Spirit through this star to that church age. That you might wonder who the seven spirits are. It's the seven messengers of the seven church ages. See? Now, and each time that the star came in on the scene, the Holy Spirit came down and anointed that star and kept it just that exactly like the first one was. Amen. Now, let me, let me confirm that to you. Paul said, if you want to know what kind of a star it was, because remember, Satan is a star too. Amen. Star of the morning. Now, notice, Paul said, do you believe he was a star of the Ephesus church? Amen. He said, now, if you want to know whether it's true or not, in Galatians 1.8, Paul said, speaking there, that after the time had come and grievous wolves and so forth, he said, if an angel come down from heaven and taught any other gospel. Now, you know, this man is coming to look like an angel, a big biker. He said, no matter who it is, if any angel or anybody ever comes and teaches any other thing than this gospel we've taught you, let him be accursed. Amen. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Paul was the one who constrained them to re be rebaptized if they hadn't been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Come and be baptized over again Amen. in order to receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Acts 19, 5. He was also the one that laid hands on the people and gifts and set the church in order with working of miracles, divine healing, gifts of tongues, interpretation of tongues. Is that right? Amen. 1 Corinthians 12. See what Paul said. 1 Corinthians 12, and you'll find it. He set in the church. God set in the church uh, these great gifts. And Paul set them in order and put them in order so they could work for the glory of God. Paul said that. Then if any man, no matter what denomination he belongs to, that tries to tell you that the days of speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, divine healing and miracles, and the witness of the Holy Ghost as a baptism, let him be accursed. Amen. Amen. For the same Spirit that was up on Paul would be the same Spirit that was sent to the next church age. Yeah, yeah, the same yeah. to the next church age. And the same on down unto the yeah. end of the church age. Yeah. The same Spirit. The Holy Spirit. you believe that? Yeah. If you notice this, this is wrote here, the writer note. Look, the seven Spirits. Watch. Capital S. Yeah. Holy Spirit. Only one of them. Amen. The same Holy Spirit coming seven times to all seven church ages, bearing the same light. Amen. Get it now? Amen. Seven church ages, seven times this Holy Spirit would carry this same message, which was pronounced a curse to anyone who would change it. Amen. 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 Now, see if that bears with the revelation of the whole thing. He said, Whosoever shall take away or add to the same will be taking his part out of the book of life. Amen. Amen. That's the whole thing covered over there. Yes, amen. So there's no room for you to jump or squeeze anyplace else, see? Because that's it. Amen. That's what amen. God said. That's what the Spirit said. That's what the church has said. Now, if you try to force in any other kind of a doctrine than what Paul taught, amen. it's wrong. Amen. 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 The Bible is correct. Amen. His life, Jesus said, I'll take his part out of the book of life. Now you say, what part of the book of life? There's many people who has their names in the book of life is sure going to fail. You know that, don't you? Amen. Remember that teaching the other night? Did you get it? Amen. Let me go over that. Don't sound good just yet. Don't feel right. <laughs> Amen. Judas is a carrot, was the son of Satan. He was a devil manifested in flesh. Amen. The Bible said he was. Amen. The Bible said he was born the son of perdition. Watch this. Just a minute. <clears throat> now, on this was Jesus. Here was a thief to his right. Here was one to his left. Now, when Jesus was the Son of God, is that right? Uh, amen. Now, some people only see three crosses. 
But there was four. Four crosses. Now what is a cross? Is a tree. Is that right? The Bible said, Cursed is he that hangeth on a tree and he has made a curse for us. He hung on a tree. It had been cut down, but it was a tree. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Down here at the bottom of the hill stood another one. Judas <coughs> hung himself on a sycamore tree. Is that right? Yeah. Look, here is the Son of God came from heaven, returning back to heaven, taking with him the repentant sinner. Here is the Son of perdition come from hell, returning back to hell, taking with him if thou be. Amen. The unrepentant Amen. sinner. Amen. Amen. The unrepentant Amen. sinner. If thou be the Son of God, say thyself and us to this and said, We have preached that gospel preacher. We deserve what we're getting. But this man's done nothing. Lord, remember me when he come into that. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. Who was that? Uh, stumped a little bit last night or the night before. This is God's able. Amen. Here is the devil's king. Amen. Amen. Right. As Cain killed Abel at the altar, Judas killed Jesus at the altar. Amen. Amen. That's right. Yeah. The smoke just rises way back here in Eden and settles down right here again. Amen. Exactly. Oh, it's glorious that old world. Amen. 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 Just full of glory. Now, now we find here, excuse me, that this church of Sardis unto the angel, he said the seven spirits, he that has the seven spirits, unto the angel of the church of Sardis, right? These things saith he that has the seven spirits of God. And now how many know that God is one spirit? Amen. Sure. God, the Holy Ghost, God... Father, Holy Ghost, all the same person. Because Mary was conceived by the Holy Ghost. Now, the, but God used this Holy Spirit in seven different and evangelical lights. To the church, seven church ages. You get it? Amen. Seven church ages. Now you say, God doesn't do that. Oh, yes, brethren. Look, He used the spirit of Elijah. And when Elijah went away, Elijah went away Elisha received a double portion of it. Amen. And when Elisha got sick and dying, then he come back again on John the Baptist. Same thing made him act, just like Elijah did, living in the wilderness and so forth. Is that right? Amen. And predicted to come again Amen. in the last days. Amen. See? God uses the Spirit right on down. And Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost, went about doing good. Is that right? Amen. And the same Holy Spirit was up on Jesus, came right back into the church on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Come right back into the next age, the next age, the next age. And what is it? The same and one self Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, don't you see? God above us in the Father. God with us in the Son. God in us in the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's three offices and not three gods. See? Those three titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, belongs to one name, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Now, watch now as we go on. The seven spirits. Saith he holds, in other words, holds his messengers. Messengers that will be anointed with Holy Spirit. With this same Holy Spirit that Paul, the first one, was anointed with. The second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. All of them are in his right hand. Oh, driving their power and their light from His right hand. Now, He ascended on high, and Philip said when he was dying, or Stephen said, I see heavens open and, uh, and Jesus sitting at the right hand of God. Now, I don't mean that God's got a great big right hand and sitting on it, but right hand means a right hand of power and authority. Amen. That body that God created would not suffer my Holy One to see corruption. Neither do I leave his soul in hell, but raise him up and set him in the stead of a spirit on the altar. Watch. When they seen uh, him sitting on the altar and had the book in his hand. And no man on earth or beneath the earth or anywhere was able or worthy to even look at the book. But a lamb that as it had been slain from the foundation of the world, way back at the beginning, Amen. when he first thought of this redeemed body, Amen. come and tuck it out of the right hand of him oh, that sits Lord. upon the throne and sat out himself. Amen. 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 There you are. That's the scripture. Amen. It's just beautiful, see? Now, he that overcomes shall sit with thee on my throne as I have overcome and sat down on my father's throne. In other words, I tuck within my body the Holy Spirit 
I overcome all the things of the world through the temptation by the Holy Spirit and took over and in Him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Amen. All powers in heavens and earth is given unto my hands, He said. All the power, then God's powerless if He's another person. Amen. For the Bible said, Jesus said, after His resurrection, that all the power in heaven and earth both was given unto my hands. Amen. Amen. And Jesus comes from heaven with ten thousands times ten thousands of His saints. And the Bible says that the heavens was empty for the space of a half hour. Where is this big fellow God then? <laughs> See? He's in Christ. Amen. Sure. And as we overcome by the Holy Spirit like He had, we will sit with Him as He takes the earthly throne of David to sit and rule with Him just like He did up there. Amen. 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 With power and authority over all the earth. And the earth is groaning, waiting for the manifestations of the yes. sons of God to be Amen. manifested. Amen. God's son. Because after all, this world was not given for God to control. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. Who is the God of the earth? Man. Amen. That's His domain. All, everything in the earth is subject to the man. Amen. Through sin He fell. Through Christ's redeeming power He comes back again. Amen. That's right. Because the earth belongs to man. It was given to Him and He was ruler over everything. Amen. Amen. And all nature's groaning, waiting for that time that when the sons of God will be manifested again. Amen. 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 Manifestations Amen. of the sons of God. Now, we better leave that right now, but the messengers are in His right hand waiting. Wherever He sends them, they'll speak the same thing. For the Holy Spirit that was in Christ. Oh. The Spirit that was in Christ. When he left, he said, a little while and the world, cosmos, the Greek word, which means world order. Not the earth, the world. The order of the world. Will see me no more. Denominations or whatever more. Will see me no more. Yet ye shall see me, the church, the believer. Amen. For I, I, personal pronoun is right. I will be with you, Amen. even in, in you, Amen. unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus Christ. Yesterday, today, Amen. and forever. Amen. You see it? Amen. Then if that was Christ, Holy Spirit, came on the day of Pentecost that did those things, it's Christ, Holy Spirit, been pushed out here. Christ, Holy Spirit, Amen. still holding here. Amen. Christ, Holy Spirit, still holding here. On down here and to the end of the world. Amen. The same Holy Spirit that filled Paul with the Holy Ghost and the things that he done will fill this and arenas full of the Holy Ghost. Fill uh, Martin full of the Holy Ghost. Fill the rest of them full of the Holy Ghost. They fill you and I full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And it's a Pentecostal blessings from one church age to the other. Amen. Alpha and Omega. The end and the beginning and all. Oh. Amen. Root and offspring of David, morning star, rose of Sharon, lily of the valley, whatever more. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen. He that was, which is, and shall come. Alpha, Omega. All. Oh. All and all. Amen. Oh, my, that would make me sing a song. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, who do you say that I am, said Jesus. From whence did you say that I came? Do you know my father, or can you tell his name? <laughs> he said, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning from the end. I am the whole creation, and Jesus is the name. Amen. Amen. I am the... Spoke to Moses in a burning bush of fire. I am the God of Abraham, the bright morning star. Amen. I am the rose of Sharon. And from whence did you say that I came? I am the whole creation. But Jesus is the name. Amen. All the family in heavens and earth tied into that one universal, blessed, holy Ghost filled, chucked down, named by the Holy Ghost, spoke by the Holy Ghost, born by the Holy Ghost, named. Amen. Right. God given it all, the famine, in heaven and earth, and everything that ever knee shall bow to that name. And there's not another name given under heaven whereby man must be saved. Amen. Not perhaps ought to be, but must be Amen. saved. Amen. Oh, I love it. It's just good. All right. In his right hand. Now do you find out? It is a Pentecostal church. Amen. Power, signs, wonders being performed all the way along. 
Now we went down through the dark ages where it's almost smothered out. Now let's take the second verse. Oh, I believe we'll just carry on just a, a little bit with this first one yet. I know thou works. Thou has a name that thou livest and art dead. Turn over to the next church here. You find out, but thou has not denied my name. Following church, not denied my name. But in this church, you have a name. Amen. Watch here. This church kept his name. This church kept his name. This church kept his name. And this church went through a dark age and there's nothing said about it. When they come out to the life on this side, the first little escaped one. When Luther pulled him out, you have a name. Amen. That you are alive, but you are dead. Amen. Now what name did they use after they quit using Jesus' name? Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen. And there ain't no such a thing. Amen. It's a dead, it's a dead theology. Amen. Tell me, is Father a name? How many fathers in here raise up your hand? Which one of you is named Father? <laughs> Sons? And humans. <laughs> that, that's what it is. It's not, his name's not Holy Ghost. That's what it is. It is the Holy Ghost. Amen. The name, Holy Ghost ain't a name. Holy Ghost is a title. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So you see, there, it's just as bottomless as the eternal sonship. Amen. There's no such a thing as eternal sonship. A son's born from. Eternal never did. There's no such a thing as I said tonight as an eternal hell. How do you ever get eternal hell? There always was a hell then. The Bible said it was created Amen. for the devil and his angels. There always would be a hell. If they always will be one, there had to be one at the beginning. And what, who used it back there when, when he was El, El, Elohim? The self-existing one when there's nothing else in it. Hell had to be right there with him. Amen. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. Amen. And all the wicked will be cast into it. It's exactly right. They'll be punished for maybe a hundred million years. For what they've done. But there'll come a time that they'll have the second death. Amen. There'll be nothing left of them. Everything that had a beginning has an end. Amen. So when we receive eternal life, we're receiving part of that cosmic light that was back there before there ever was a molecule. <laughs> that light of God comes into our heart that lightens us that we see Jesus. Amen. The Bible said we don't see all things, but we see Jesus. Now, I said... I know it's, I'm he that's got the seven spirits and stands to the seven churches. I know all your works and all about it. But you've got a name that you're living, but you're dead. Now, I remember, whose age was this? Martin Luther. The Lutheran age. Now, they was condemned at the start. They didn't even have the start. They were dead to begin with. They didn't have to die. They were dead to start with. See? They just snatched down. Now notice this. Now, let's read the next verse. Watch. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Now he's talking to Luther now. We all admit that this, this is the Lutheran age. That's the Reformation. Now what did he say? You brought out a false name. That you're living, but you're dead. What did they do? They put it right back into the denomination again. Amen. Yeah. And pot can't call kittle black. Don't hark the Catholic. See? Because you're right back in it using his same creeds, names, and well, Luther brought out many of the catechisms and everything else that the Catholic Church had. And took up a name himself. See? Amen. You have a name that you're living, but you're come from this dead thousand years here and you're still holding that name. You've got a name. Remember? To be sure that's right, the other churches said, you have kept my name. You have kept yeah. my name. Yeah. This age, they lost it and come out here and said, you've got another name. Amen. That you're living, but you're dead. Amen. Oh, you Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutherans, and Pentecost, Amen. repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ Amen. for the remission of your sins. Get out of them old dead creeds and things that belongs to a Catholic church is going to be consumed and all of her daughters with it. Amen. 
Because no one can say that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, some kind of, and that thing, and they call it the Holy Trinity, Trinity. I want somebody to find even the word Trinity in the Bible and come tell me about it. Amen. Amen. Just find the word Trinity. It's not even in there. No such a thing. Now, now, they're ready to die. Hold to that that you've got. Luther snatched you out. Hold to that because it's ready to die. You'll, they'll purge you right back into it again. Hold to that. It's ready to die. Now, and I have not found you perfect yet before God. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Oh, my, I love it. <laughs> Not perfect. Why? They were just justified. Amen. Luther preached justification. Amen. They had to be sanctified and then filled with the Holy Ghost. And then they wasn't their own. They were perfected by the Holy Spirit in them. It's not the, not the Christian that's perfect. It's the perfect Holy Spirit in him. Amen. Amen. That's why, as I said, it ain't the Holy Mountain. It's the Holy God on the mountain. Amen. Not the Holy Church. Not the Holy People, but the Holy Ghost in the church Amen. and in the people. Amen. That's the holy part. See? Now, I've not found your works perfect. You haven't come to perfection because we find out now that they had justification right here. Justification, this is... Uh, no, I beg your pardon. Justification is right here under Luther. And sanctification is here. And here is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, that three elements that worked in those three church ages... That's what takes to constitute the full birth. Amen. They were only conceived as a little germ in the womb of the mother. That's right. The Holy Spirit coming to birth. Now, I want to ask you something. When a natural birth takes place, what's the first thing happens? Water. The next thing, blood. Is that right? Amen. Next thing, spirit. Amen. That's right. What came out of the body of Jesus when he died? They pierced his side, and water and blood came out, and into thy hands I command my spirit. Amen. Water, blood, spirit. Therefore, being justified by faith, Romans 5, 1, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Justification. Sanctification, Hebrews 13, 12, and 13. Jesus suffered without the gates that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. Amen. Amen. Luke 24, 49, But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. Amen. After this, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you will be my witnesses. Amen. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. Not when you become bishop. Not when you become deacon. Not when you become pastor. Not when you become pope. But after this, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. Then you'll bear witness. Amen. You can only bear witness of your church and of your creed. As a, if you're just a deacon, if you're just a pastor, if you're just a pope, or if you're, you're bearing record of a creed. But when the Holy Ghost has come upon, then you bear record of Him. And the works that He did, you do too. Amen. All the life is in you. Oh, boom. I, I like that. Yes, sir. Well, I get it more of it up here than you do out there. I just feel good with it. <laughs> Things that are ready to die. Hold on to them. Now he says here, now in the third verse, Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard. I like that. And hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come unto thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know the hour that I come upon thee. Hold fast to your justification. Stick to it. Don't let them people stop that back away from you. Amen. That also that you have received, you heard. They read the same Bible that we read, see? But they just didn't take all of it. Because it wasn't revealed to them. It wasn't for their age. Amen. That's the reason that they'll come forth in the resurrection. Amen. They walked in what light they had to walk in. Amen. So they will come forth. Now, I've heard many Pentecostal people that preach the baptism saying them Lutherans and so forth won't come forth. Oh, yes. You know the little story about Dr. Agri up there? Well, I told him, he said, what are we? I said, you know, they raised that great uh, Lutheran seminary there, Bethany, at Minneapolis. And he said, uh, well, what have we Lutherans got? I said, well, I tell you, I believe you got Christ. And he said, well, we want, we want the Holy Ghost. He said, you think we got it? I said, potentially. And um, I said, you're believing on to it. He said, well, what do you mean? Now, they have thousands of acres there. They're students. If they can't, uh, can't pay their way through, they let them work their way through and raise corn. I said, well, there's just, just big tables. They give me a, one of these smoggers board dinner down there in that big seminary. And, uh, this fine man. 
Dr. Agri sitting here and Brother Jack Moore over here because I was sitting close where the, if he got speaking some big words I didn't know I was going to punch Jack with my leg and see what he said. You see. So then um, I said, uh, he sat next to me and he said, well, what we want to do is find out something here. He said, we're hungry for God. And said, we read a book on Pentecostal, The Gifts. And said, we went, a bunch of us brethren flew to California. We met the man that wrote the book. I know him. He said, we'd like to see some of the gifts in operation. He said, I don't have any of them, so I just wrote about them. <laughs> he said, and said, then when we come over there and we've seen this, we're hungry. We want God. And I said, well, one time there was a man went forth, you know, on his own grounds there, see. A man went forth and disc up a great big field. And he took all the roots out of it and everything. And then he planted corn. Each morning he went to the door and looked out to see if he had any corn. The first thing you know, one morning... Two little blades are sticking up. Anyone ever raised corn? Where's George Wright and them? Roy Slaughter and them, you know. Them two little blades that stick up. Oh, he said, praise God for my field of corn. I said, did he have a field of corn? He said, well, one way. I said, potentially, yes. I said, that was you Lutherans in the first Reformation. Button forth that little blade. <laughs> well, I said, by and by that corn growed. I didn't tell him about the off fall. See, I just let him go with the corn and grow. So I said, the corn grew and that's why it got a tassel on it. And that tassel looked back down to the leaf and said, ha, 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 ha. you ain't got nothing, you old farmer Lutherans. See, I said, I am the, uh, I'm the breeder. The great missionary time, the wind blowed and the little tassels fell off like that and dropped down. That's Wesley, sanctification. See, that was the greatest missionary age we've ever had has been the Wesleyan church during the time of Wesley. Even exceeds this age. The Western church age. It was a missionary age. And it scattered what it do. It scattered it. See, even nature bears record of these three. Yeah. Amen. Right there. Nature itself. God in the beginning made it so it would be that way. You don't even have to have the Bible. You can look at nature and see where you're at. Yeah. See? And then, and then, after a while, it dropped over there. And what come out? Up come an ear of corn. It had grains on it. That was a Pentecostal group. Now, the Pentecostal group was the same kind of a group down here. From here, he had two blades of corn, Luther. Here, he had the tassel, Wesley. And down here, he had the grain of corn, what? Just exactly like it was back here. Amen. Same thing. Well, now, what was this year? He said, well, now, the Pentecostal said, I don't have no use for you Methodists or you Lutherans. But after all, the very life that was in the two little blades helped make the tassel. Amen. And the life is in the tassel made the corn. Amen. So you see, it's all God's program. They had the Holy Spirit potentially. So did Wesley under sanctification. But today it brought back speaking in tongues and restoration of the beginning back here. The same Holy Spirit. Amen. You see, the true ones. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes, all right. Hold fast. That which you've heard. Let's it die. Now, the fourth verse, I believe it is. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Now, don't make a denomination out of it. We don't want to do that. No, I, I, I read the wrong verse, didn't I? Or did I not? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, in Sardis, has not defiled their garments. There was a few of them that still would not bow down to that thing and kept themselves pure and clean. The old trace from way back to Pentecost, the spirit filled. A lot of them then, when Luther's age, began to denominate. What did they do? Started right back like the Bible said, acting like their mammy. Come right back down, started a denomination. But a few of them stood right out if they wouldn't do it. Amen. They stayed right out for God. So they said, well, all right, you got a few names. And they're worthy to walk before me dressed in white. Don't make a denomination. Don't take up the Nicolaitan doctrine now. Don't start your denomination off again. But just stay free in God. Let the Holy Amen. Spirit lead you as you go on. There's a few of them still left. Now, the fifth verse, I believe. He that has an ear, let him... Uh, see now. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And... I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before the angels. Now, the few names, very few small remnant was left that didn't take on, the, take, was took over by the Catholic doctrine. All right. 
Now we come to speak of uh, the Reformation. I'd like to... I left off Luther's background so that I could get it in here. Now the next verse that he has in here, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. God trying to warn them here to stay out of this Nicolaitanism. Stay away from there. Keep their garments unspotted from any things of the world. Just stay free in Him and He would lead them and guide them. Now that's the first beginning. Now... By Reformation, I mean the escaped ones. The ones that had escaped even in the Sardis church. Do you understand what I mean? Amen. The ones that still had escaped that horrible thing. Now, now we'll pick it up again tomorrow night and bring it right on down here into, into the Pentecostal age and show you that's exactly it. Now, there's some of these things that we talk of here, the how did they escape it? Now, we'll pick that up down in the next age. See, we have to pick it up to make it go together. If you don't, then you you you, you miss giving the, the people nailing it down in that next age. You see, yeah. you've got to let them have it just as the Bible gives it. You see, yeah. all right. Now, the w- escape ones is the one he's talking about. That's these right here, this little bitty group here that's living by justification. Now look, they come out, they seem to like Luther turned right after the death of Luther. Not Luther. Luther never made no organization. Is that bunch after him? Amen. Wesley never made no organization. Is that group after him? Amen. The old founders of Pentecost never made an organization. Is the group after them? Amen. That's Amen. the one that does it. See, it's the second round that does it. The real angel of light will never make an organization. Amen. You'll find out on this on this Pentecostal age what comes at the end of that organization too. See, when the Holy Spirit reveals it to us. Now, he says you've got a little bit of life left. Just a little bit. It's ready to die. It's doing It's just justification. They can swing you anyway. You haven't got any life yet because you took the wrong name. But you're, you're at least you've been snatched out. See? You are, you, you've escaped the Roman church. You've escaped all that dogma. And you've at least come out that far. Now, you're reading the same Bible. Now, but... The same Bible teaches the Holy Spirit. He never condemned them for what they had. And let's hold on to that till I come. See? Just keep holding on. Now, the church age began about 1520 when the Roman universal Catholic church had full swing that uh, lasted until October the 31st, if you're all putting it down, October the 31st, 1570 A.D. when Martin Luther nailed his 95th thesis on the church door in Wittenberg, Germany and from that time the Reformation was on. Amen. <laughs> Did you get those dates? Amen. Let me get it again so I'd be sure. October the 31st 1570 A.D. when Martin Luther nailed his 95th thesis on the church door at Whittingburg, W-I-T-T-E-N-B-U-R-G, Whittingburg, Germany. From that date, the Reformation set in. The fire began to fly. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> he protested okay. that Catholic church, standing that, that in his hand like that. He said, this right. being the holy body of Christ, it's a wafer and a little wine and whammy you throw it on the floor. Amen. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. He protested the Catholic Church and the, that began the little snatch out come then. Uh, All right. The, it was on. But it was more of a, a fight for political power than it was for the real true church. For the Christian standards. They only fought for a political right Amen. to come out of the church and make another church. Amen. They never reformed coming out of the Catholic church to bring back the Holy Ghost and power in the church Amen. because they denied it. Amen. Amen. It was a political rally. That's a, it would certainly fit thou has a name that thou livest and are dead. In other words, he just brought out the Protestant denomination. That's all. Amen. He brought a daughter out of the church. Out of the, he brought a prostitute out of the whore. That's exactly what happened. He brought Aletha out of Jezebel. Amen. 
Now, anyone that reads the Reformation knows that's so. Because he just simply, a few of the old relics and orders that, and ceremonies, he, he simply demolished them. But as far as bringing the Holy Ghost back in the church like it was back here, he did not do it. No, sir. It was a political fight more than it was a spiritual fight. It was politics instead of the Holy Ghost. He had not yet entered the church. Oh, brother. He hadn't come back. He comes back here. Not up there. Now, it was a great political rallying. But it was not for the Holy Scriptures and the and the Holy Ghost, it was a political rally that he did get rid of some of the old relics of uh, the crucifix and the Hail Marys and all of that. But he still brought out a catechism. He still brought out this, uh, uh, what do you call it, consecration services, uh, whatever it was down there when they go down on um, uh, Easter morning and the pastor wishes them a Merry Christmas, you know, don't see him no more till. Christmas time, he said, you know, at um, oh, um, confer- confirming service, what I'm trying to say. Take them down and confirm them. Give them the first communion and confirm them. There's no such a thing as confirming. Amen. The only confirming is mission of the Bible, and, and the Bible is when God confirmed His Word with signs and wonders following. <laughs> That's the confirming. <laughs> Not the confirming of belonging to a Lutheran church, but God confirming His Word in you. Amen. And the Lord was worked with them, Mark 16, confirming the word with signs following. That's the confirming of the Pentecostal church. That's the confirm. God confirms Himself alive as a miracle working God in the church, speaking in tongues, interpreting in tongues, and doing the same thing they did at the beginning. Am I wearing you out? No. All right. Now, notice they did not bring back the Holy Ghost revival. They brought back a new church age. They brought back a snatched out one, escaped one from the Roman hierarchy to make a Protestant hierarchy. Amen. That's the only thing they did. Jumped right out of the skillet into the fire. See? That's it's right. Amen. Exactly. Jesse Bell just give a birth to a daughter. And now don't think I'm just saying this to, to act smart. I'm saying this because the Bible said so. Amen. Amen. The Bible in Revelation 17 said she was a mother of harlots. Jesus said here, just like Jezebel was, so will she be. And she put forth daughters that polluted the the country that wasn't polluted. And that's exactly what Protestantism done to the real Spirit of God. It polluted the thing and put it right back into another organization, which is God willing on Sunday morning. I want to show you that uh, that they make an image unto the beast, and the beast was Rome. Amen. Amen. And they made an image like that. What was it? An organization. Amen. Amen. Oh, I hope that soaks down into the hearts of people. Amen. Now you wonder why I fought organizations so hard all my life I didn't know myself. But it was something within me crying out. I couldn't help it. I wondered, I always wondered, why was I was always down on women so? See? All my life. Not, I don't mean real women. I mean these supposed to be. You know, moral fibers broke out of them and everything, you know. That's the kind of a something in me. Now, a little bitty old boy, up there, I'd see them women come up there on the road and they know their husband's out working. I'm up there, some guy drunk on the side road and he'd walk up down the road, sober him up enough to get him home, cook her husband's supper. I said, they ain't worth a clean bullet to go through them. Right. That's right. I said, they're lower than animals. I do a thing like that. And I, when I was 17, 18 years old, I'd see a, a girl come down the street. I'd cross over on the other side. I'd say, that stinking viper. See? And uh, I would have been a real hater. But when I received God in my heart, God let me know that He's got some jewels out there. He's got some real ladies. They're not all defile themselves like that. Thank God for that. When I was over in Africa, when I was over in Switzerland, when I was in Rome, I asked this question. Like, hey, say, Brother Branham, don't you all have any decent women at all in America? Every song comes over here something dirty about your women. I said, that's the Americans, but we got another kingdom in existence over there. Amen. <laughs> that's the kingdom of God. Amen. They are ladies to the core. <laughs> they are. The Bible said over in 
And the prophet said, I believe it was about the fifth chapter of Isaiah. I'm not sure if it's in the fifth or the sixth chapter there. Talking about, blessed is that daughter of Zion shall escape in that day from all them things. Amen. How she'd walk down the street. She'd have her stockings rolled down. She'd mince as she walks, twists like that. And uh, uh, the things that she would do, just exactly the way they do now. Amen. Just perfectly. Wear garments like a man, which is an abomination to God. I've seen a religious society a while ago going in to have a, some kind of a little blowout they have about every night. And these women all going in with these knicker bo- or, or, or What are them things you call them? Not shorts, but the other pedal stuff. Pushers. Yeah, they pedal pushers. <laughs> uh, them things there. All, uh, they need a pedal push, all right. <laughs> Rather that's a board about that wide. That's right. Head comes from pedestrian. That's on your foot. And that's exactly what they need. That's right. But oh, you say, well now, I think it's more decent for a woman to wear that than it is for a skirt. God said it's an abomination in His sight for a woman to put on a garment. And when a woman cuts her hair like a man, God wants a woman to look like a woman, dress like a woman, act like a woman. And He don't want a man with great big sideburns hanging down like this, like a duck sitting on the back of his head like that. He wants him to look like a man. Yes, sir. My, they dress so feminist so hardly they know what sex they belong to. It's, it's pitiful, these beat necks and everything we have today. No wonder we're living at the end time. There isn't nothing left in this world but for God to pour out His wrath upon it and burn her up. Oh, a just and holy God could do nothing else. They spurned the blood of Jesus Christ. They've dogmatic themselves. They got into an organization and oh, some old holy father with his old bachelor with his collar turned around come up and tell him my blessed children that means no more than a sow saying it. I'm Amen. telling you what we need to is a back to the Bible and the Holy Ghost brother, and the power of the resurrected Christ Amen. standing in the church working signs and wonders and miracles. Amen. 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 That's the gospel. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, brought forth. Uh, so yes, that's right. It did the 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 revival done some pretty good things. Uh, that revival, but it didn't bring forth the uh, Holy Ghost. They didn't bring that forth to down this later C and age, down the Pentecostal age. But it did do one thing. This revival done some things that he said, "Don't let it die now." Strengthen it. Keep adding to it. Amen. See? It brought forth a free Bible to the people again. Amen. The Lutheran age brought forth a free Bible. Amen. They made their press and began to give the world the Bible. God bless the Lutherans for that. Amen. Yes, sir. They put the Bible back in the laity's hand again. Yes. Was well, just priest alone. You never even had to look at it because it's what the Pope said. He was the God, so whatever he said, that did it. So now... The Lutheran revival, what they wanted to strengthen. Now you've got the Bible in your hand. Now read it. Amen. Believe it. Don't lay it up on the shelf and say, Well, we got a Bible. That ain't going to do you no good up there. Amen. There's too many Lutherans in Pentecost today right. laying the Bible around and taking what somebody else says about it. Amen. Brother, read the Word. Amen. Amen. Search the Scriptures for they are they which testify of me, said Jesus. Amen. And then you think you have eternal life. That's the thing to do. Read the Word. Now, he said, hold to that. Don't, don't let that slip. And um, another thing it, uh, he wanted to hold on to, it had a little strength left in him, was the Lutheran revival. The second thing it done, it brought the doctrine of justification to light. The Catholic don't take justification. It's Catholic Church. It's like that priest. He had to put him off the air here some time ago. He said there's no other salvation nowhere else but in the Catholic Church. Salvation is in Christ. Amen. Not in the Catholic Church. Amen. Not in the Protestant Church. Amen. It's in Christ. Amen. Salvation. But the Catholic believes they don't care what the Bible says, what the church says. See? Amen. You can't talk to them because there ain't, no way, there ain't no way to talk to them. They don't care. They got, they'll talk to you on their catechism, anything like that. But when it comes to the Bible, they, they just discard that. It's what the church says. But Jesus said in this very thing, Jesus Himself that if any man shall take anything away or add anything to it, he'll take his part of the book of life. Amen. Jesus said, let every man's word be a lie and mine be the truth. Amen. Heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Oh, there it is, brother. I'm a believer in God's word. Amen. Right. Amen. And not only that word that God speaks there, then I ask the Heavenly Father to give me the Holy Spirit to confirm that word. 
to make Christ live in me. That I know I've got eternal life, not because I deserve it, because His grace has given it to me. Amen. That's the rock. Upon this rock I'll build my church, He said. All right, justification. All right. The thing of it was, after they had already brought forth something that they ought not let die, that was they had got the Bible in their hand again. The Lutherans did that. And another thing, they got the doctrine of justification by faith. That's what Luther taught. Everyone knows that. That was his doctrine. Just, can't you see how perfect that is? Then long come Wesley with sanctification. Then here comes the Pentecostal with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Just this perfectly. Now, uh, you've got a few things. Hold on to them now. And, and don't let them die. If you don't hold on to that, I'll come quickly like a thief and you'll go right back into the denomination again. And that's what they did. That's exactly. Went back in. You'll come right back to the Nicolaitans again. Because you'll go right back out of the denomination. Hold on. Keep reading that Bible and keep justification and keep pressing on. But there's a little rim that come out of there. A little rim that after the first come Luther and then comes Swanglin on down Calvin and on and so forth on down to Wesley. But there was a little rim that come out of there that taught sanctification. Amen. Not a sanctification come a little rim that went on into the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> See that little rim that all the way along are keeping that, that alive. All right. But... Thirdly, they brought so many of the pagan forms of doctrine out with them. With it, such as denominations, false baptism. Now, they come out sprinkling and so forth like that and Father, Son, Holy Ghost. They brought catechism. Truly, had, truly they fit up with, the name, with the, what Jesus said here. You have a name that you're living, but you're dead. That's correct. All right. Fourthly, it is true that the Reformation swept away many of their uh, polished relics and, and rituals and so forth, but it failed in the church in the restoration of bringing forth the reform. It failed to restore back full gospel teaching with signs following. Amen. The Lutheran church never did have it. They never had it, and they never had it in the Wesleyan age. They only had it down at the end of this Laodicean age. Now, when we get into that, we'll get right back in the Scriptures and show you just exactly how they promised it. They did not have, uh, did not restore the Holy Ghost revival. <clears throat> they did turn from idols, and they turned from idols. That is true. They took down the idols out of the church. Mary, Joseph, and and Peter and Paul and all them, they turned from the idols, but they did not turn to the risen Christ. Amen. Luther turned them from the idols, but into more like a politic or a or denomination or organization to make themselves just another organization, an image like the first one, and try to outgrow it by their denomination. <coughs> and now they're still fighting. The Methodist still wants all the Baptists to be Methodists. And all the Lutheran wants all the Baptists and Methodists to be Lutherans. The Pentecostal wants all Baptists, Lutheran, and everything else to be Pentecostal. See? It's just keep adding to your denomination. But that's not God's program in the first place. Amen. God's program for restoration was to bring back that which was from the beginning. Amen. Looky, resurrect that. If this book falls to the floor, now to take another book and take it in its place isn't restoration, resurrection. Amen. You have to bring the same one up. Amen. Amen. So if the church died through the dark age and become completely pagan back here, then the restoration, the re that's a reformation to reform, but to be reformed and born again is two different things. Yeah. Yeah. See? They brought back reformation, reforming, getting away from a lot of their idols and so forth, but they never brought the Holy Ghost back in the church. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Amen. Lord. Amen. Brother, sister, can you see it? Amen. They never brought the Holy Ghost back because the one that really brings the true gospel life, put on your cap now, Amen. the one that brings the true gospel life is the angel of the church down here. Amen. Now we're going to see that Sunday. Amen. Now they'll have lights up on top of lights and Christian lights, but they'll everyone go right back into that organization. But there will come one that'll stand against her. Amen. 
Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. And he'll jerk her in it from there just as certain as I'm standing yes. in this pulpit. Amen. That's right. And he'll go straight back to the beginning. Amen. And I'll Amen. take the scriptures out of the Old Testament and the New Testament and prove to you that he'll do that, the angel of the church Hallelujah. of Lady Osea. Amen. That's right. Go right straight back to the original and resurrect this thing here again. Hallelujah. And the resurrection will come at the day of this year. Amen. That's right. But Luther jerked the church out. The escaped one, escaped one, one step, thanks to a justification. The escaped one, you got one foot out of paganism. That's all right. The next time it takes two feet out. That's all. It was like, did you notice in the Bible, it was water coming out from the back of the temple. And um, he said, uh, he saw water up to his knees. Then the next water up to his waist, the next time he went over his head. <laughs> well, when he went over his head, he had to get to a place he could swim. See? He had to swim. So we're getting into a place now to just swim around. <laughs> That's all. It will ground you, run you completely away of bringing in one. So it's swim around. Hallelujah. Oh, I am so glad of the Holy Ghost. Aren't you? I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. I'm one of them. What then? One of them. this, that, or that, or that. So glad that I can say I'm one of them. Hallelujah. One of them. One of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Don't that sound good? Listen. They were gathered in the upper room, all praying in his name. <laughs> they were baptized with the Holy Ghost, and power for service came. Amen. Now what he did for them that day, he'll do for you the same. Amen. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Oh, one of them. I'm one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. One of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Do they go to seminaries? No. Some of them can't even write their own name. Amen. Huh? Peter couldn't. The Bible said he was an ignorant and unlearned man, him and John. But they had to take heed to him because they know they'd been with Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Glory. Though these people may not learn to be educated or boast of worldly fame, oh, bless God, I got so many souls. They have all received their Pentecost, baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. And they're telling now both far and wide, his power is yet the same. Amen. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Oh, one of them. One of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. One of them. One of them. I'm so glad. So glad to be one of them. I'd rather be one of them than anything I know of. Amen. Oh, I'd rather be one of them and to be the president of the United States, yes. to be the king of the world. Amen. Uh, if the Lord Jesus walked down here and said, I'll turn you back to 20 years old and make you an overseer, a king of the whole world, and give you 10,000 years of, of life upon this earth to stay uh, 20 years old. Never have a sick day, a heartache, and all will be joy and everything in the king of the whole earth to live 10,000 years. <coughs> or would you want to be one of them and just have to struggle through like you're doing? I'd say, I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After 10,000 years, then what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is eternal. Yeah, yeah. How did it come, brother? Oh, it's been come through blood. That's right. It's come a long way. And it come by God being made flesh and dwelt among us. In a manger long ago, I know it's really so. A babe was born to save men from their sins. John saw him on the shore. 
the Lamb forevermore. O Christ, the crucified of Calvary. O oh, I love that man from Galilee, from Galilee. For he's done so very much for me. He's forgiven all my sins, placed the Holy Ghost within. Oh, I love, I love that man from Galilee. The woman at the well, he all her sins did tell. He's the same yesterday. How five husbands she had at that time. She is forgiven of every sin and a deep peace place within. She cried, come see this man from Galilee. Amen. Oh, I love that man from Galilee, from Galilee. For he's done so very much for me. He's forgiven all my sins, placed the Holy Ghost within. Oh, I love, I love that man from Galilee. Amen. A publican went to pray in the temple there one day. He cried, oh Lord, be merciful to me. He's forgiven for every sin. And a deep peace came within. He said, Come see this man from Galilee. I like that, don't you? Amen. The lame was made to walk. The dumb was made to talk. That power was spoken with love upon the sea. And the blind was made to see. I know it could only be the mercy of that man from Galilee. Amen. Sing it with me. Oh, I love that man of Galilee, of Galilee. For he's done so very much for me. He's forgiven all my sins. Place the Holy Ghost within. Oh, I love, love that man of Galilee. Don't you love it? Oh, my. This good Holy Spirit gospel. Oh, how I love it. I love him with all my heart. And I'm so glad tonight that I'm numbered with them. And we are together as brothers and sisters, Baptist, Methodist, Pres Catholic, Presbyterian, whatever more. God has brought us out of every walk of life and has brought us over to this great fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Not belonging to any denomination. That's up to them what they do. But we are in a mystic kingdom. Yeah. We are baptized into the mystical body of Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost, who is Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, and whosoever will, let him come. Amen. Jesus said, all the Father has given me will come to me. And none of them will be lost. Now I'll raise them up again at the last day. Oh, my. We used to sing an old song down at the altar here. I don't know where we stand or not. Room, room, yes, there is room. There's room at the fountain for me. Amen. You like them old songs like that? Amen. Give us a key, somebody. If somebody knows how to start it. Where's our pianist at? Is she here? Or the brother Teddy or any of them here? Oh, my. I don't see him anywhere. Room, room. Yes, there is room. There's room at the fountain for thee. A room, room, yes, there is room. There's room at the fountain for thee. You like them old songs? And I like this too. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down there for cleansing from sin.
Now, while we sing this next verse, shake hands somebody in front of you, back of you, sides of it. Come to this fountain for for that, aren't you? So glad that I can come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast my poor soul at the Savior's feet. I remember one day when a little boy, about 18 years old, running from the Lord. I went out west. I wanted, My father was a rider, and I wanted to go out and break the horses. There's something hungering in my heart. Oh, I tell you, I went down to the Baptist preacher. He said, stand up and say, Jesus, the Son of God. We put your name on the book. That didn't satisfy me. Everywhere I went, somebody, a Seventh-day Adventist, went to see him, a fine man, Billy Barker, lovely brother. He said, Billy, come and accept the Lord's Sabbath. I have now. But he said, the Sabbath day. And I thought, oh my, that was still going to be interesting. I went out west and I thought, got way back up there that night, was on the roundup. And, you know, you took your saddle off and your camp bag and laid it out and used your saddle for a pillar. I was laying back up under them old pine trees that night. I was on day watch and so... The night boys was out bringing the cattle down. And there was an old guy called Slim from Texas. He had a, a guitar there and he was playing glory to his name. Another guy there had a comb with a piece of paper blowing to it. They've been singing other songs. Cowboy ballads. got to sing that down at the cross. My, I turned over put my blanket up over my head like this. I look back at you and look like them stars is hanging right down there close to the top of them trees and them mountains. That old everlasting whisper of them pines I can hear in the holler, Adam, where art thou? Glory to God. About three weeks after that, I went out into the city and all the boys got drunk and I didn't drink. I'd have to take them all home, pile them on the car anyway, and they get out there and shoot at one of their toes and everything else. It's dangerous to be safe. Draw a straight line down through and bet one another five dollars they could walk it and they couldn't walk the sidewalk out there. <laughs> I catch one. That's the way it was. They all got sobered up after they got their money. Now I was down there and they was all drinking. I went over a park and sat down. I thought, my, my, about 35 years ago, 35, I guess 35 years ago. Now I sat down there at a park. Phoenix is a small place then. We come from Wickingburg down there. I sat down there and there's a little Spanish girl come flipping through there and me sitting there with a big hat sitting on the back. <laughs> she passed by and dropped this little handkerchief, you know. I said, hey, you dropped your handkerchief. <laughs> I wasn't interested. I heard a little noise down the street there and went down there and there was an old boy converted out of them bucking stalls out there. Pot marks all over his face and the tears running down his cheeks there playing a the guitar saying, glory to his name. Oh, my. The tears running down his face. He stopped and said, Brother, you don't know what it is that you receive this wonderful Christ. Glory to his name. I pulled up his head down. I went, oh, my. You can't hide from him. You just might as well come out and confess him. Oh, he is wonderful. Yes, he is. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus, so sweet.
to this fountain so rich and sweet. Just cast your soul at the Savior's feet. Oh, plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to the Let's bow our heads, just raise up our hands now. Just, just wait. I speak unto thee this night as thou hast assembled together, even as I have moved out upon thy hearts tonight and have pierced thy soul by my spirit and my word. Amen. I speak once again, my children, yea, the days that lie before thee shall be great days for those that shall declare to follow me, saith the Lord. For I say that I shall shine upon thy pathway many things out of my word. And I speak unto thee, my people, that if thou shalt purpose to follow me, then I shall give unto thee the wisdom of understanding in these very things. Yes. For as I look down in thy midst this night, I see that there is in the hearts of some, saith the Lord, that there are some this night, I say unto thee, that are troubled as to what they should believe. But my people, this night I speak unto thee, be thou not discouraged, and go thou not from this place, I say, with a downcast heart and attitude towards these things. For I say unto thee that if thou shalt look unto the Lord, I say that I shall give thee understanding, and I shall deal with thee even as I would a child, and I shall bring thee into the light of these very things, and I say that I shall perfect thee as my people, and I speak to thee, my sons and daughters, tonight, as thou goest from this place, and as thou goest into the many places from whence thou came, would thou take this light, I say, and be a witness of it unto many people. What I say that around this world tonight there are darkness and confusion, but but I speak to my servant, saith the Almighty God, the hour is upon thee. Yea, I say unto thee, my servants, this night, lift up the light of my gospel truth. Yea, declare my holy word unto my people, that they may be delivered from all these things, saith the Lord. <laughs> Now, if there would be some who wouldn't know what that was, that's Pentecost. <laughs> the Holy Spirit speaking. Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the gospel. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall speak with new tongues, lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. All these things that he speaks of, it shall come to pass. Oh, I am so glad. See, the Holy Spirit coming, confirming that word. A light. Take it. Don't, don't doubt it. Just receive it and He'll deal with you as a child and bring you right up. Amen. Isn't that sweet of the Holy Spirit? Yes. The Holy Spirit of us. I remember one time in the Bible, they didn't know which way the thing was coming, the enemy was coming, and the Holy Spirit fell upon a person like that and told them just exactly where to go. And they went there and God confused the other army and routed them. That's right. Oh, we still live in Bible days, don't we? Amen. Amen. Always as long as the Holy Spirit's there. Oh... Let us stand as we sing, Take the name of Jesus with Remember the message. Child of sorrow and of woe, it will joy and comfort give you. Take it everywhere you go.
Jesus with you as a shield from ever snare. When temptations around you gather, breathe that holy name in prayer. Oh, oh. oh. let's sing it again. Take the name of Jesus with you as a shield from every snare. When temptations around Yeah. 